Right. Beautiful. Do you notice how much the heat went down? <laughs> the camera drops. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Just got to get it organised in my head first. Um, like I said, the, this is the worst bit for me, is introducing you, because I don't have any prompts or anything. <laughs> okay. Neil and Kim. Su oh, Sullivan or Sullivan? Uh, Sullivan. Sullivan. Yeah, okay. Neil, Neil and Kim Sullivan. All right. <clears throat> G'day, folks. Uh, fairly early on farm in the morning. Sorry, I'll do that again. G'day, folks. Fairly early in the morning on farm at Kim and uh, Neil Sullivan's uh, organic farm. Uh, we've got Marco Reggio, who I've just met uh, in the back of the ute today, so I'm really excited because he trained in uh, agriculture in Brazil, came over to Australia and then started working for Graham State with NTS. So we just want to have a bit of a delve into your history and right. what you, what's special to you, why you've gone down this track, how you were trained as an agriculturist and, and just the difference in culture and things like that with, with regards to farming. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, nice to meet you all. Um, so I think the reason why I got into agriculture, study agriculture back in Brazil um, was because of my granddad. So he was not really farming, but it was really uh, regenerating the land. And he got this, uh, this place, 25, hec uh, 25 hectares, and he just, uh, it was an abandoned land, so it was a pasture, abandoned pasture. Prior to that, it was a coffee plantation. And he just um, started planting trees. So he planted more than 25 trees on his land. And that was, I think he bought the property when I was only five and uh, every now and then I was going with him to the property and I really, really liked the idea. So I started liking plants and I said, well, okay, agriculture, that's, that's what I want to do. Um, so when I went to university, I studied in a uh, university very, very focused in sugarcane and very conventional uh, practices. And very good, I, I, I learned a lot um, because it really, they have a really uh, holistic approach on agriculture. And, but we had some concepts that really, um, really aligned with, uh, with uh, regen regenerative agriculture, which is direct drilling and uh, cover cropping, mono with, uh, uh, however, with monoculture, uh, which is with sun hemp. And um, we were doing that, they were teaching us that because uh, it was working, but we didn't understand why that was really working and what's, what's the reason why. Um, and I didn't, I didn't understand it till I started uh, working with NTS, understanding more of the biology in the soil. Um, so I did, um, I did work in a project for WWF in Brazil, uh, trying to mitigate the impact of agriculture in a big conservation unit. And Is that the World Wildlife? Yes, okay. yes, exactly. So the company I worked for, we got uh, hired to really understand what was the impact and how we could actually mitigate using um, the agriculture, actually uh, trying to use sustainable practices to, to uh, really uh, help it. And once the project was finished, it was a success. It was a really good project. So we managed to really help organic growers around the area. Uh, we did a really good policy to improve um, money being invested in conservation projects in the area. Um, when the project was finished, um, I said, yeah, that's, that's the way. I don't want to really go back to conventional agriculture. So um, I started looking for a lot of jobs in Brazil and I was only getting opportunities on conventional, um, conventional farming positions. And I said, that's not what I want. So it took a while till my partner and I, we decided to come to Australia. And um, it, I always had this desire to come to Australia. I don't know where it came from since I was a teenager, maybe movies or, <laughs> or I don't know. But um, yeah, so here we are. And uh, when I moved to Australia, I first started working because um, I've got Italian citizenship. So I came on a working holiday visa, working, um, which would have allowed me to work full time. And I started working a few farms, uh, picking tomatoes and strawberries. 
And I got in touch with these guys in the sunny coast, fresh box, and they sell organic vegetables in boxes. And because um, when I got here, I started calling every single place trying to find a job for myself as an agronomist. And I rang these guys and they said, well, look, we don't have any positions here, but if you want to come uh, one day on a week, help us with our backyards. We've got some vegetables and you can help us with that. And I said, okay. So my partner and I, we started every, sun, every Saturday, we started going there and they were giving us beautiful veggie boxes. And they mentioned about Nutritech one day. I said, okay, that's probably the, the contact that I was uh, chasing. And uh, got in touch with NTS and yeah, um, started working on the farms um, with helping with the trials and the thing started kickstarting and uh, yeah, um, really started on the role of as a farm manager in our research farms and here I am at the moment uh, doing the so agronomy. Did you have to do any of the courses to know sort of what Graham was wanting, what, what he was yes. aiming for? Yes, I did, I did the course. I did a five-day course that we do in the Andina. And, but I think the most important thing for me to really understand the biological side of, of, of the agriculture and the whole concept was uh, I started when I was working at the farm because it was really... Um, I didn't know all the concepts, all the theory, but um, working close to Graham, I started understanding more the biology aspect. I started putting a few things in practice. So I worked as a farm manager. Uh, well, I actually was a, a farmer at the day because I was doing kind of everything, mm -hmm. uh, planting, picking, selling, uh, uh, working the soil. And yeah, so um, and I learned a lot of things about it. And that's how it all started. And um, that was for one year and a half. And then I moved to the agronomy after a year and a half. But yeah, I did, I did the course and it was, yeah, it was fundamental for me. But so that journey as a farmer really, yeah. really helped me to understand uh, with the practice because I could see the results. I could yeah, see the benefits okay. of it. But the course that you did um, back in Brazil compared to the NTS course, what was the difference then? Uh, I was, well, totally different. I mean, in Brazil, I, um, I spoke to a few people that study agriculture here and uh, in Brazil, it's a five five year course, and um, we study full time, and we have all the all the approaches, but it's pretty conventional. Um, so you really, if you really want to focus on regenerative agriculture or sustainable agriculture, you really have to uh, go towards a different direction. And um, whereas uh, the Gramps, uh, the the course that we do in NTS, uh, we got uh, we already involve all these concepts using biology, so we interact the soil biology, the soil structure, and the chemistry of the soil. So all in the same uh, package. So it's, it's pretty different. It involves everything. Yeah. Um, Does it make, was there any ever, was there ever any time in when you were doing, it was a degree that you were doing? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> where you said this and this, I can't get my head around it. It doesn't make sense because there was something else missing. Well, kind of, it's just because, uh, it, it, every everyone that goes to the university, they've got sort of the, the well back at the time, and uh, we all have the same mindset. So everything that was taught, it was what we, we was the truth, you know. Mm. Uh, things started changing a little bit for me when um, so I think was uh, when I was in my third year of uni, uh, they started with a new course there, which is um, ag agricology. So we started having people with a different mindset. Uh, coming to the university so the the elective subjects they started changing so we started having more interaction with um, with um, uh, with the land uh, with how to to, to take off to take care of the land trying to get away from the conventional system yeah. so that's where my mind I think that's where my mind started shifting a little bit okay. uh, with this interaction so I reckon um, that course was was pretty pretty interesting to uh, to my journey yeah. towards regenerative agriculture yeah and when you go on farm now, so you're, you are technically an agronomist for NTS. Yeah. How is that different? What, what's your approach like? Yeah, um, I remember when I was uh, at uni, I went to um, Mato Grosso, which is a big agricultural area in Brazil. And I went with an agronomist and he was selling uh, corn seeds. And he was just knocking on farmers' doors and saying, look, this is the product that we've got. And do you want to try to tell all the good aspects or, or what he was offering? And the reception, of course, is really hard because you've got so many, so many uh, guys knocking on the door. And 
and I said, well, I don't, yeah, that's, that's not what I would do. And um, with my role that I've got an NTS, we don't sell a product, we sell actually a concept because we're selling, um, we're selling uh, the idea of uh, building up the soil. So to build up the soil, you've got to, you've got to address so many different aspects in your, in your land, which is what I mentioned, the chemistry of the soil, biology of the soil, soil structure, so we include cover cropping, liquid injecting, foliage spraying. So it's not just one soft visit that we just uh, knock on the door and sell the product. So it's 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 a different role. Um, so it, it really, really interesting for me in the long term as well, because I get to see so many different uh, farmers, so many different soils, so many different strategies to improve the land. So I learn every day that I visit a farmer, I learn heaps. So it's really, really good for me as well. And of course, to help other farmers eventually. So yeah. you keep having different strategies that you can um, show, present to other farmers. There's such a big variety here in Australia, isn't it? With oh, it is. In the climate, in the soil, in the topography, and yeah. and and just in what farmers are farming, like yeah. whether it's commodity or food or um, broad acre or mixed or grazing or yes. yeah, that's right, <laughs> that's right. Um, so yeah, following it with that. Uh, when you start, how long have you been working then with NTS? Um, it's been nearly five years, so April, okay. yeah, next month. So no, no, sorry, NTS, yeah, June, June 2017, so yeah, close to five yeah. years. Uh, have you found there's been a shift in farmers' attitude towards you because of the way things are going? So, for example, with the lack of nitrogen now, yeah. they're trying to source different avenues. To yeah, to definitely. To uh, it's, it's, it's funny because sometimes I get calls from, from farmers saying, oh, look, I'm really interested on in getting towards a different path on my, uh, on my land. I really want to start doing the right thing. And then the conversation goes and then he says, oh, yeah, the, the fertilizer is bloody expensive. And I say, OK, that's the reason why you contacted me. But, I mean, it's a good push to so they can start understanding and trying a different concept so it there is a big shift with the price increase definitely uh farmers have to try to find different alternatives and uh it, even if it's from the from a different reason that i would like to um it doesn't mm. matter it's just bringing them to that system so we can really uh make the difference mm. yeah. and how are you finding them wanting to pay for advice rather than a natural product because that's what happens with the old style agronomy is that, yeah <clears throat> yeah i advise you to have this this and this and they're quite happy to pay this yeah. is what i've found out mm -hmm. but with your style it's like well i'm not actually selling your product i'm selling you the this sort of direction yeah ha has it been difficult for them to get their heads around no it's 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 good because you create a relationship where where you build some trust so um you you and and that's a big part of what we do is it's not trying to push uh push something to use in the farm it's, it's just education so when you educate the farmer they understand what they're doing it so they always try to find uh different ways even different differently that what you uh, show to them they try to find different ways or different strategies because they understand the concept yeah so okay. it's a better way for you to really help them to keep on track yeah because um, if you if you just try to say look do this this and that and don't explain why if it doesn't work at the same time or if it does something wrong he will just give up and go back to the conventional style yeah. but if you educate them if you explain them how to do things or, or help them to understand it yeah. then they say okay i did it wrong because yeah yeah because of this because of that so they really try to overcome this issue and 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 really keep going yeah and that's what we were discussing in, in the little group that we had last night after the storm uh, was about um, applying these biological applications and then them just not working yeah and you were talking about you know well they're actually living so they go into a dormant state if the environment's not yeah if they don't like the environment that you're putting them in yeah exactly and so of course with you being the agronomist you're able to sort of explain this yeah and exactly like, oh my god you know i've put all this application on and it hasn't worked yeah yeah um you can then sort of say well you know was it like this did this happen you know that they do go to sleep at some stage yeah exactly <laughs> and this this is this is part of the thing it's um i um i was doing the workshop of micro brewing yesterday and coincidentally a farmer just rang me um uh, yesterday afternoon and he's saying look my brewing's not working and this is part of the service I he came to NTS he wanted to start brewing the microorganisms to introduce to the soil and he started doing it and every time that he's got a problem or 
he just comes back to me, he rings me and say, look, I don't know what's going on. So I, I, I try to teach all the aspects and show all the aspects so he can start doing it himself. Yeah. And this is a good thing. It's just, I got a lot of farmers just constantly ring me just trying to understand, yeah, can you help me with that? It's not working. So I'm more than happy to, to help with that. It's mm -hmm. just uh, the way it is. Yeah. It's a different concept. So it's, it's sort of a long way. So everyone understands everything. So it's on, we are exactly on this journey trying to explain mm -hmm. and show how we do it. Yeah. And what I would love to see is that you get so busy that you need another agronomist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the way. Well, we can, uh, the more agronomists we've got with this mindset, the better it is. Because yeah. uh, in Australia, I mean, Brazil, it's as, as big as Australia. Uh, and it's a big land to cover. So the more agronomists with this mindset, the better it is. Yeah. Thank you so much for sitting in the back of the year. No worries. It's Thank you very much. It was here, a pleasure. So uh, we're going to crack on, hopefully, get in the field. Yeah. Yeah, well... <laughs> Depending on the Hopefully. weather, we've had boiling hot, we've had storms, we've yeah, had pretty intense. rain. <laughs> now it's overcast, like being in Melbourne. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, right. Marco. No worries. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. See, that was all good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> that was right. How many, how long was it? Oh, didn't check this one. Uh, 17? No, that's good. So about 15 minutes to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah, well <laughs> <laughs> I did actually forget to where you were looking as well. So you were just like, oh, shall I look at the camera or shall I look at you? Oh, so you handled it really yeah, well. Yeah, I tried to. Sort of yeah.